Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool pinball video for you this evening. This is a pretty interesting machine. This is Bally's Professional Home Model Evil Knievel Pinball Machine. This came out in, I believe, 1977 and was uh, a kind of two-thirds size um, of the commercial arcade, commercial pinball machine model that you could buy for your house. Um, they used a lot of the parts that were actually on the full-size machines, so it wasn't really a toy. It was kind of more marketed, um, kind of like you know a home pool table would be marketed, or a, the old, if you remember the old bumper pool tables from the 70s and 60s, it was more like that, something for your game room. So it's actually a pretty fun little machine. But uh, a gentleman brought this in and wanted us to work through it a little bit. It's actually working, but uh, it plays real slow and the flippers are weak and all that. So we're going to shop it out a little bit. And we figured we'd film a little video while we were working on it, just so uh, it would kind of document how these things are made. And then at the end of this video, we'll play it a little bit and you can see what you think. But uh, yeah, we'll get into the uh, first thing we're going to do is lift up the play field and look underneath it and see how uh, similar it is to the full-size models and uh, what's going on with it. Alright folks, I want to show you what the inside looks like. There's three screws that you take off the front and once you take those out you can take the lockdown bar off and then the play field has a little bar at the front of it that screws down to these two screws, I mean these two holes. So you take these two screws out and then you can lift it up like we've done here. So these have, uh, are similar to the uh, to the actual uh, commercial versions you know um, you can see that the play field is not quite as nice I think I think you've got more more plies on the commercial one um, the flippers are very very similar to the commercial models that may actually be about the same it looks like the Paul is a little bit different at least on this one so that it can run two flippers on the right. On, a, on most Bally games where they have two flippers on the right, they'll have an extra, an actual, uh, well, I'm pretty sure they have an, a, an extra actual whole solenoid and everything for the other flipper. Um, but on this side, that looks very similar to a commercial Bally uh, flipper coil setup. So uh, the parts should interchange, so, you know, to make it uh, stronger, looks like you could probably put new plunger links on it although that's that one's seems like it doesn't have basically you want to see if there's a lot of slop in this and there doesn't seem to be just a little bit but um, the coil sleeve being replaced would help getting the end of stroke switch adjusted right would help make it more powerful um, the pop bumper assemblies look the same as the commercial versions uh, you can see that they've got their switch gapped Let's see if I can zoom in on it for you. See how the gap is pretty wide on that switch, so it's going to be hard for the pop bumper to work. We'll get that adjusted and cleaned. Um, and then, of course, most obvious is they have these big boards on the bottom of the play field uh, with lamps uh, mounted in instead of having the individual sockets like the commercial machines do. They also have these little micro switches um, that the spinner, so you can see there's the spinner. The spinner wire comes through the play field here, and as it spins around it hits this, this armature here. And if it does it right, it's kind of hard to see it. Whoop. There you go. It should hit that switch in, and you should hear it click 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 those switches you could probably replace um, you might have to swap this this armature to the new switch but um, sometimes you can take them apart and clean them too I don't know if those are looks like those are riveted together so you might not be able to do that on those but we can check those out a little bit and then you've got all of these sockets that you know twist and have the bulb in them that's very similar to uh, more modern pinball machines have a lot of those on it. 
So there's not much to it. Oh, we've got the, the one kicker over there. Let's see what the kicker assembly looks like. The slingshot. Yeah, looks just like the ones in the commercial units. So it's pretty cool. They made they designed it with commercial parts. Um, we'll we'll get those all of that a little snappier. Get the pop bumpers working a little better. Get the uh, kicker working a little better and getting the get the flippers working a little better um, let's see what's at the back here all right here is the back of the cabinet uh, you've got a big power transformer there um, that's a different model than what they have on their uh, commercial units but they do have a big transformer on the commercial units and then you've got a power supply board here which is also a different model than what they have on their commercial units that actually looks like um, the boards underneath the playfield I noticed had Midway logos on them. That actually looks a lot like a Midway power supply for some of their uh, arcade games like Sea Wolf and Space Invaders that would have came out around this time. So it's very similar. It's not a, not identical, but it's it's very similar. And then you've got the connectors over here, um, and then this shield I would imagine went over that. There's a circuit breaker just laying there. Maybe that used to be there and they've swapped it at some point. Who knows? But uh, I think what we'll do, everything's working. I think, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll work on some of this stuff underneath it. See if we can get it to play a little stronger. The guy wanted us to get it faster so we're going to try to put a little more slope on it. See if we can get it a little bit faster. Um, and if I can, I'll get in the back so we can see if there's anything we can do for that back glass or if it's just going to keep deteriorating. Alright folks, so we cleaned it up, got the glass back on it. Basically on the flippers that we were showing you. Excite bikes chiming in. Basically on the flippers that we were showing you, we replaced the coil sleeves like you would do on a, on a regular uh, flipper rebuild. Um, and then um, they seemed kind of weak, so I started looking through the power supply board that was in the back, and there was a uh, like a trace on the board between one of the diodes and the the voltage that came out to the flippers. It was still getting 22 volts, but one of the diodes wasn't connected, so I don't know if it was like doing half wave rectification, so it didn't work right or what. But they were kind of limp. Once I got that soldered back, the the trace soldered back together. Bam. They're pretty strong now for what it is. They're not strong for a, uh, a full-size machine, but for the home model, they're pretty strong. So we did that. We waxed the play foot a little bit. Um, also, the lights weren't working. So uh, basically, that was just a bad connection on one of the pins. So I uh, got that back doing its thing. The, these take 147 bulbs everywhere on the play field, which is a 7-volt bulb. And then they also take 455s, which are a flasher bulb in the pop bumpers. Um, we put 455s in machines a lot for uh, like the name on a game. So these older EMs, they didn't have any kind of uh, logic to make a bulb blink or anything. So if you put a blinking bulb, it blinks by itself, it just if it has voltage going through it. So it's kind of nice to put them on an EM just because it kind of draws your eye to the, uh, the name. But on this one, you've got the same thing going on. The, the game board in the back isn't really powerful enough to blink a bunch of bulbs or anything. So they ship them with 455 bulbs and the pop bumpers that just blink on and off randomly. So it ended up looking pretty good. And like I said, we got the flippers a little bit stronger, so it plays a little bit better. Um, there's really not much to it. So I'll, I'll set up the tripod. We'll play it a little bit, and you can... Uh, just see how the gameplay was. Oh, and the I think all of the layouts were almost identical. There was there was some of them had a uh, a kicker over here and then another one over here. You might have saw on that one board underneath the play field that there was room for one. Um, so maybe on like Captain Fantastic, it's got both of them or something like that. But um, I'll set up the tripod and we'll play it a little bit. Oh, we didn't we didn't redo the back glass. We just left it how it was because I don't want to screw it up any worse than <laughs> it is. Um, 
This isn't our machine. We're, we're just repairing it for a guy trying to get the flippers a little stronger, which we accomplished. So we'll, uh, we'll set up the tripod and we'll play it a little bit. All right, folks, so this thing doesn't have any kind of a track mode because it's just such a simple little game board in it. But So all it does is those two lights that are blinker bulbs blink. But it does have music. Now, all the music is the same, I believe, on all of the home model games. So it plays some, uh, like some standard little, little uh, tunes like I'm in the money and stuff like that. <laughs> so we'll play it a little bit. So that's, you know, Beethoven's fifth. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, oh. You gotta get it a little better than that. Oh, and see how the, I don't know if you can tell. On the camera, it may look like the same player shoots again light is on. It's not the the and see the six thousand that light is not on. It's just bleed over from the other lights. Basically, when one bulb lights up, you can see it through the hole next to it. So it's kind of a little bit confusing. But we haven't done anything to the um, flippers except rebuild them. So if you've got one of these. You should be able to get the flippers this strong just from adjusting it and cleaning the play field and stuff like that. We've got, the way we've got it set up too, uh, as far as the angle, is the, the front leg levelers are all the way in and the back ones are out about an inch. We usually put more of a slant on it, but uh, on a real pinball, but the... Um, this one, the, the, the flippers just aren't strong enough to handle it being real steep. So <laughs> we just left it how they designed it. Ooh. Oh, we lost it out that lane. I should be telling you the score. We're at, we're at 20,000. And it's five ball. I don't think you can set it on three ball. Zippity doodah, I believe that one was. Doesn't that just scream evil can evil? Zippity doodah. We're gonna get some bonus here. All right, so we're on ball five. We're at forty-one thousand. started it when we had it when we were looking at it earlier the uh, display wasn't on that's because when you when you start the game when you plug when you first plug the game in there's no score so the displays won't even be little you they, you just get a score whenever you've actually played it another thing is whenever the game's over you can still hit the flippers because there's no coil or anything to turn off the flippers whenever the game's over the ball is down in the out hole so you can't play it or anything with the game over but since it's a home version, you just hit start. These things were $799 new. I saw someone saying that they remembered them at like Montgomery Ward and they were, um, they were on sale for like 550. So apparently, $7.99 was the manufacturer's suggested retail price. But back then, I think they stuck to that a little more than they do now, you know. Now with the 
suggested retail price was 800 they'd be selling it for 600 you know but back then i'm not you know i think it probably was 800 at most places we're on ball four i only got 11,000 points i want to get it to I want to get all the uh, get the bonus all the way up just so you can see some of it. Mm. Every once in a while, you'll get a real good ball going and you uh, make a lot of points. It's actually pretty fun just for a charge. Um, it's actually pretty fun for a home version. You, know? you got to imagine, you know, now people buy them in the full versions and uh, put them in their house, but you probably didn't have as many people doing that back then, so this would be the next best thing. And I'll say this, they make modern ones for your house. Um, that the sounds are a little better on. They're not as expensive. They don't cost eight hundred dollars, but uh, they're not this fun. They're pretty cheap. This one's pretty cool. Ooh. It has that vintage seventies thing. <laughs> so that uh, I'm in the money. They play that every time you win an extra ball. So I think I, yeah, I won, I won an extra ball while using the extra ball. I guess just because the points got high enough. But yeah, the modern ones I think are like three or four, two or three hundred dollars. Um, but they're not as cool as this. And this has that 70s thing going on, you know, vintage 70s st electronics stuff. doing a little better on this ball. I need my L over there. And I got my free ball already and I'm at my triple bonus. What you think about that triple bonus? Okay, so let's see what we get. We're at 65. Want another free ball? All right, I don't know how it's going to keep track of all these free balls, but we'll see. <laughs> I'm at uh, 110,000. And you see the same player shoots again is already lit, so I, whoop, I'm gonna need it too. And I'm still got the same player shoots again lit. I think I won two or three extra balls. Come on, get over to the L. Oh, this this also had a uh, tilt on it, so you can't shake it too much. You can shake it, but don't break it. Oh. It was the thing I was talking about. It's just bleeding through onto this. It's not the actual, um, that light wasn't lit. Okay, so we're at 115,000. We'll play one more game. I'm gonna be serious this time. Seven thousand nine hundred fifty. Can you believe that? Isn't that pathetic? There we go. That's the hardest one, it seems like for me. Mm, it keeps bouncing off that one just right where it goes down the middle. I might, if it does, if it tries that crap again, I might have to nudge it. And you know me, I'm not much of a nudger.
I need to get that three. That one's kind of hard to get to. Mm, missed it. Get it. Get it. Hit it. <laughs> oh, I should have. I should have hit it with the nudge. Damn, I keep missing it. If you get time, if you get time on YouTube, go go watch uh, that. I'm in the money. It comes from a movie called Gold Diggers 1933. Go find a <laughs> Google that on. Or... All right, we're gonna play one more time. I only got 26,000 that time. Look for look for Gold Diggers 1933. I'm in the money on YouTube. You're gonna love it. That's where that song comes from. I'm all over that three. I know it works because I got it earlier. Mm, that was a direct hit. It should have worked that time. thousand on ball one you kind of get more points as it goes along because you uh all of the 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 features and everything don't reset after each ball so once you build up to where everything's worth more it stays that way i think mm. slid it right by me I thought I had done something special there. Uh, all right. 28,550 points, and we're on ball number four. All right, I'm going to have to check that number three switch. Six thousand two hundred fifty. This is the last ball, folks. Oh, right down the damn middle. See how they did me? All right. Well, there you go. Evil says thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up down below because we took the time to film this for you. We didn't have to do that. We could have had all this fun without you, right? So give us a thumbs up for taking the time to film the video for you. And uh, leave your comments below if you had one of these back in the day. Or if you think they're just crap. Or if you think they're pretty cool. Now I'll bet if I was giving this thing away, you wouldn't turn it down. Right? <laughs> so I like they're pretty cool. So uh, leave, your, leave your comments below. And uh, we will see you on the next video.